Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Star Wars Battlefront Podcast. Episode 4. Today we're going to be reading a review, telling you some news. We're going to be doing the top five best Starcar hands and a discussion on our favorite Starcar hands. We will also be having a question for you to answer at the end of this amazing podcast. Let's get started. This review is titled Great, but could be better by Skiz7. I really dig the content and the Star Wars puns, but some constructive criticism is always awesome. So may I suggest more fluency and perhaps interviews. May the force be with you. May the force be with you too, Skiz. Thanks for the review. Uh, we really appreciate the constructive criticism. We will take into account all that you have added, and we have been trying to find some guests to interview. Maybe you could be one. Speaking of criticisms, uh, we have a question for you, the listeners, or listener. How can we improve this podcast? Email us at battlefrontpodcast at gmail.com. One more time, Sam. Battlefrontpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks. Now let's get to the news. There is a new mod that makes Battlefront look even better. I have no idea how that's possible, but it is only for the computer. An EA executive says Battlefront may lack depth for hardcore gamers. He states that they tried to make Battlefront as accessible as possible, so an 8-year-old and his parents can play it. In other news, a Battlefront update patch contains game mode balances, online traffic performance improvements, and also the DL44 was nerfed, as well as the Barrage Star card. That kind of stinks about the DL44, because that's my favorite weapon, but I still use it even though it's nerfed. Because we pre-ordered the Battlefront game, so you get early access to the DL44, so you don't have to rank up. I think it's level 40 you have to... Yeah, 30 to... I mean rank 40. Yeah, rank 30 to 40. I was really surprised that they nerfed the Barrage Star card because it was super popular. But it's probably because it was so popular and powerful that yes. it got there. It was really powerful. It shot three grenades out of it and blew up in succession. So if you are near that vicinity, you would be dead. I was actually thinking of getting it before I heard the news. Because I love the Barrage. Now let's get to the top five Star Card hands. Yeah. Now let's get to the A-hole setup. But for the sake of this podcast, we're going to be calling it the troll setup. It has the thermal detonator, the explosive shot, and the impact grenade. So I really like the uh, impact grenade. We actually have it in our star cards currently. It's super effective. You can throw it and you don't have to wait. So if you've got someone running at you, you can just throw it. Boom. They are either dead or... Really, a lot of they are either dead or really a lot of damage. They're really Han Solo. Ha ha. <laughs> Effective on maps like Indoor, the smaller Indoor map, because you have so much Indoor areas. We're not going through that <laughs> pun again. <laughs> well, indoor, Indoor. We've well, already I, named a podcast that. Well, say just play multiplayer. Um, actually, today on Indoor, I think it was Cargo. And he was getting wrecked by a guy who had explosive shot. I got killed by this guy. Half of my deaths. That guy was a beast. And I think he had this set up. Uh, because he killed me with the explosive shot many times. And once with the impact grenade. It's just so annoying. You're like, come here, come here. And then they shoot you from far away or even close to you. And then you die because of explosives. I don't really like the thermal detonator, to be honest. It it's, takes too long. You throw it, they can run away from it, they're alive. But one time, Sage is getting killed, and then he threw it right before he died, and the guy literally walked over to it unsuspectingly and blew up. Yeah, that's the good usage for it. Sam, what's the next one? The next star card hand is the anti-vehicle setup. It comes with an ion torpedo, ion shot, and ion grenade. There's a bunch of ions in there. Which ion, if you didn't know, is the most effective against vehicles. Like you can't even use the ion torpedo on uh, people. You can use them on vehicles. I mean, which that includes the, tur the turrets. I've made a, that mistake many times. I get the iron torpedo out, aiming at the guy, it's perfectly on them, try to pull the trigger, 
and I can't use it. The reason we had the Ion crap is because it came with the pre-order. Yeah, it came with both the Ion torpedo, and, torpedo ion. and the Ion grenade. I hate the Ion grenade. It sucks. It takes so long. I You throw it, it takes about 15 seconds to explode. And by the time 15 seconds is over, you're dead and the guy's over by your body celebrating. This is what I always do. I throw it and then wait for like 10 seconds and I'm like, okay, I still got some time. I walk over to it and then it explodes and kills me. It happens. It happened to me like five times. We used to have this exact hand, but we couldn't use it because we've been ranking ourselves up before we play the vehicle modes. And plus, we're mostly the Imperials. Which stinks. Which actually is good. Not on Hero vs. Villain. Debatable. Okay, Sage, what is our next star card hand? This one's called the Long Range Threat. It contains the Pulse Cannon, Focus Fire, and the Homing Shot. This is a good matchup for open maps like Hoth or Tatooine. You can stand on the cliffs or mountains and snipe to your heart's content. When, uh, when you kill everybody, they get this faraway shot of you standing way out there, and then they start cursing and throwing the remote all over. It's very rewarding. I really like this star card setup, especially with the pulse cannon, which one shots if you have it charged up a certain amount. I don't believe it one shots honor guards, which is rebels which spawn on Princess Leia or shock troopers that spawn on Emperor Palpatine. Homing shot, I've watched videos and they said it needs to be nerfed, which if it locks on you, it one shots you. Yeah, it's way overpowered. Focus fire, I guess it's okay. I'm not really a big fan of it. I really like it. It's good for a far away, which is why it's in the long range threat. I'm surprised the long range threat doesn't have the cycler rifle. I think the reason is that is because it doesn't have much range to it. It's mainly a close-up rifle. I think it's actually really good long range, especially if you have focus fire activated. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. I actually tried that strategy, but it never works out. For some reason, I can never shoot the freaking guys. We have this weird thing with our remote. I'm about to call. I'm going to call Sony about it. It's like our controller has a mind of its own. It's it'll possessed. Press, it's, it'll press buttons that we're not even around. Yeah, I was playing multiplayer, well not like the multiplayer on battles, with my brother, and out of nowhere, I accidentally throw my thermal detonator. I did not want to do that. And our <laughs> friends that were playing it had some trouble with it as well. It's so annoying. So anyway, let's not get sidetracked, and let's go to the fourth star card hand. The next star card hand is the flanker, which includes scout pistol, scan pulse, and jump pack. This is a good matchup for indoor. But we've never. The bigger map of indoor. We've actually never used a scout pistol before. We are able to buy it, but we've, we've always been just saving it for. saving our money for other stuff. Because we recently just upgraded the jump pack. And we've got only. like 986 credits. Yeah. Then the rest of our credits we use on basically thermal detonators, impact grenade. Stuff like that. Well, anyway, this is how you use this setup. You're going to get into the Ewok scaffolding. You're going to use your scan pulse to find the enemies. So you're going to jump down, use your jump pack, get to the side of them. Pow, pow, pow. You've just killed four people Focus your using your forward. gun and your scout pistol. I didn't see those four people. I think this is a good hand, especially with the scan pulse and jump pack. As I said, I'm not familiar with the scout pistol, but I'm guessing it does a lot of damage. So on to the next one. This is the tank. It comes with a cycler rifle, personal shield, and the pulse cannon. You use your personal shield to get away, run through everybody, turn around, pow, pow, pulse cannon, recycler rifle, pow, 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 pow. Recycler rifle? Be green, everyone. <laughs> well, anyway, the cycler rifle is automatically good, and the pulse cannon, epic. Once you charge that bad boy up, one shot, one shot, one shot. To charge it up, you hold down the trigger button. Right trigger. The right trigger. Now let's discuss our favorite star card hands. My favorite star cards, I'm going to list them as Homing Shot, Scan Pulse, Cycler Rifle, Wookiee Bowcaster, and probably the Impact Grenade. Well, I like all of these star cards, and don't show me something that I didn't know. 
So you hold the trigger down just as you would charging up the pulse cannon, and the bowcaster actually shoots up to four shots at the same time. That's crazy. So if you're getting attacked with a lot of short soldiers from the front, you can charge that up and kill them all at once. I thought the bowcaster was crap until I saw that. So my favorite combination currently is the scan pulse, impact grenade, and jump pack. I probably replaced the impact grenade with the bowcaster, but we do not have that unlocked. Yeah, you have to be ranked with 31. I think it's ranked 40. I think it's 31. Okay, 31. Okay, Sage, now let's talk about your favorite Star Clan hands. I obviously like the jump pack. I like the focus fire. It's really good. It stabilizes your gun, which you need with the DL-44. And then finally, the pulse cannon. That's my preferred hand. But I would probably need some explosives in my star card hand. If you want to tell us your favorite star card hands, email us at battlefrontpodcast at gmail.com. Or tweet at us, tie-dye sheep, Y-T. And for our question for this week is, what is your favorite blaster? And then just a reminder, how can we improve this podcast? First, let's talk about our favorite blasters for this week. DL-44. I actually would go for the DL-44. I'm kind of liking the RT-97C. That is a beast. Apparently it got nerfed, but it's still a beast, even with the nerf. I would actually tried out the DH-17, which we purchased, because I was getting wrecked by that gun. And it's not that good. Yeah, it wasn't as good as I thought. It's basically the machine gun pistol. You can spam it. But if it wasn't the RT 970, I would actually go for the DL 44 and then the E 11. That E 11 is pretty nice. Or actually, E 11 or E 280C. E 280C? That's that's a pretty nice one. It doesn't do much damage, but you have to. But it has a good rate of fire. Yes, if if you are the rebels, you can get that without unlocking it. Same for the stormtroopers with the E 11. That's it for this episode. Thanks for listening to the Star Wars Battlefront podcast. If you would like to be featured in this podcast, please leave a review on iTunes or tweet us at tie-dye-sheep-yt or email us at battlefrontpodcast at gmail.com. If you feel you would give a good perspective on the podcast, we are open to special guests. Email us if you are interested. May the force be with you always. Goodbye. Recycler rifle, be green, everyone. Strike incoming.